Welcome to the Identity in Christ series. My name is Tyler Brondike, and thank you for joining us all today. Um, we're going to be starting in the book of Genesis. And so um, just for some context, Genesis is the first book of the Bible, and we are in the first chapter. So if you will, turn, turn with me today in your copy of God's Word to Genesis 1, verses 26 to 28. Let me read it. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. We're going to focus really on verse 27, but I, verse 26 and 28 are good bumper ver verses to help us find this verse and see how it applies uh, to the, the surrounding verses, surrounding chapter, and really the, the entryway into God's word, uh, word and world, the kingdom. So I would like to, you to consider what, what makes an image? What makes a good image? What are some of the characteristics or marks that separate out uh, something very unique in an image? And so let's consider a painting, for example. You can see a, a master painter in his artwork. Uh, there is beauty in, in seeing what uh, reflects every brushstroke, illuminates a color or a feature that is drawn out where you can see the brilliance of the light. But what about how it can, can really give you a window into something greater? So for example, you can see an ocean or see um, something that looks out into the distance and it can, it can remind you of an ocean of perhaps a trip when you took from Cape Cod to Martha's Vineyard or a trip from the United States to Africa or Africa back to the United States. And it can conjure up memories and, and take you from this time into something back then, or perhaps even propel you into the future as well. So it gives you a great window. This is the power of an image. Finally, it gives a good purpose into what the picture is, com is conveying. And so we can see uh, a boat can signal something different if it's coming to shore than if it's leaving shore. Or perhaps a, a, a crashing wave in is going to communicate something different than some nice gentle ripples on a warm and sunny day. All of these things, these things help to create and capture the complexity and, and really the holistic nature of an image. We can learn about identity, things above and beyond us, and purpose. And now put yourself in God's picture, God's image. What comes to mind? Do you see yourself as someone who is created from the Most High God? That's just what we read here. We are part of God's creation. And there is goodness in creation. You weren't some afterthought. Oh, let me do this and then I'll create these people. No, you are in Genesis 1, where it all began, the beginning. And in fact, he says you are good. In Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 31, this is how he ends the creation story. And God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. So you aren't excluded or in some second tier within creation. You are of the you are representative of the highest, the most high king. So back in biblical times in the ancient Near East, they say, um, the king would be a representative of the deity. And so he would, in a sense, have a higher status than everyone else. What it's saying here is that we are all made in the image of God. And so we share a common humanity. Myself, you, anyone else we see, our neighbors, our family, we are all on the same status in the eyes of God. There's no power or privilege or position that is going to take you above one person. Again, we are all on the same level. No family or ethnic line will give you any, any priority seating. No political persuasion will move you to higher up the ladder. We are all in the same position. And now the other component about the image is that uh, for some of us, in fact, I, I would argue all of us at some point um, have experienced someone tarnishing our image, someone speaking out 
against um, our name. And I will let you know that to accept that identity or to actually internalize that is not within the scriptures. It's not something that we are to believe because we read here of a new perspective and understanding of what our image is in God's eyes. You bear a resemblance, image and likeness. So we are we are like God. We, are, we aren't God. That was one of the temptations and ultimately led to, to the fall and to sin, as we will read later in, in Genesis. But we all share uh, this ambassadorship. We're representatives. We share likeness. Um, and so when we get later into the New Testament, we see Jesus as the second Adam. And so we too, human, um, share resemblance with, with Christ. You have a kingly status in a sense, although lowercase kings. We have an authority that comes directly from the God above us, not from any king or man here on earth. In fact, he gave us so much authority um, that he, he said, you have authority and dominion over all things. And so every, every living thing here on, on the earth that exists, we, and, uh, and really that's, that's, an, that's a great call. It shouldn't lead us to a over-domination or an assertion of, of this position, but to say, wow, God has really entrusted so much to his people that he, he has given this to, to glorify uh, his name for his name's sake. And so we are to steward. That would be, that's a word of really just taking care of all that is here on earth. And so whether it's government and, you know, our authorities, how we govern and how we take care of our nations and, and political landscape, our technology, how we take care of social media, um, of email, of all of these things, um, continuing on to sports, education, healthcare, all these things are, God has given us authority to create and be creators. And we see here, uh, this is a creation story. And so in some sense, we are creating. We are creating new things um, under God's provision. And we're called to create jobs, create justice, create households, create entertainment, all because we share in a resemblance to God. Finally, and I won't touch too much on this, but the last verse in verse 28 talks a little bit about our purpose and it starts to shift the direction. It talks, it'll talk about work and tending the garden. But right here, it talks about you're given a gender and a, pur a purpose at birth, male and female, and to be fruitful and multiply. We learn that God ordained this through his natural structure of male and female at birth um, and there to be, to be simply fruit, to bear children. And now again, we, we look and, and we see that God does call some to singleness as well. So Jesus himself was single and we look at the, the letters and uh, from most of the New Testament is, comes from Paul. And so Paul actually as well was single. And he, he even mentions it. He says it's a good thing to devote more time to God's work as well. And so we don't want to, you know, belittle singleness or, or to think that it's a, there's a higher calling. But we do see a, a, really a mandate in creation to be fruitful and multiply and to inhabit the earth. And so in, in this, we, we get a glimpse into the image of God or Imago Dei, uh, some of you may have, may have heard. We just skim the surface that we are all in the same standing. I'm not better than or less than anyone else than my neighbors. We also learn that we're to be creators. We can have a, these creative giftings, not perhaps in the sense when you think of creatives like artists and photographers and storytellers, but also just creating jobs, creating businesses, um, creating in our household, creating good recipes in the, in the kitchen or whatever that may be. We, 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 have, we have a call for creation. We also learn that we have a purpose. And this is just an introduction into purpose. And, uh, um, but there, there's, a, there's a direction that we're going and that identity has given um, and gifted you as well. And so I want to thank you all for joining um, and hope that you enjoy this message and that you can, if you've already come, you've heard, and now go out and do as well. Thank you.